So every year on February 25th, I get an email from SetApp letting me know that my subscription is due for renewal. And every single year I have the exact same reaction. I think, another software subscription. I don't need this. I'm gonna cancel it. I barely even use it anyway. And I do so. I go over to the SetApp website and I cancel my account only to realize just a little bit later that so many of the apps that I'm using are part of SetApp. And if I were to replace them on an a la carte basis, it's gonna cost me way more money than just to pay for the SetApp subscription. So this video is a reminder to my future self as well as a message to anyone else who might be wondering, yes, SetApp is worth it. I'm gonna explain why in this video. This is Dave's Toolbox and today I'm talking about SetApp. Now, if you clicked on this video and you're not really sure what SetApp even is, let me explain it to you. It's a subscription, about 10 bucks a month, depending on what plan you get, that gives you access to 240 apps on your Mac. There are a few iOS apps sprinkled in as well, but it doesn't work unless you have a Mac because the way you install the iOS apps is through the Mac. Now, I'm gonna show you exactly how this software works and then I'm gonna go through the value adds, the things that make SetApp absolutely worth 10 bucks a month. So SetApp in and of itself is an app that you install on your Mac and it's essentially like an alternative app store, except it's not so much like the Apple app store as it is Apple Arcade. I use Apple Arcade for my kids. I know I can send them there. They can play around, install anything they want. The worst thing they're gonna do is fill up the hard drive of their iPad, but and they're not gonna cost me any money. I'm not gonna get a ton of requests for in-app purchases. And I feel the same way about SetApp. I know I can go on here, I can browse around and it's not gonna break the bank. I'm gonna pay 10 bucks a month and nothing else is going to hurt me. So if you are a, let's say, app addict like I possibly am, SetApp can be a really great way to experiment and play around with new tools and not worry so much that you're gonna end up spending more than you initially set out to. So the home screen of SetApp is filled with similar types of things like you might see on an Apple App Store. We've got recommendations, different collections, and my favorite place to hang out is down here on new arrivals. SetApp adds about one to three apps per month, maybe more, maybe less. I think they always add at least one. And I love to just go and install the newest stuff, find out if I like it, and if I don't, it's super easy to remove. Let me show you. Let's say I wanted to install iStat menus. I'll just click right here to install. And then boom, it's installed on my Mac. It's up and running already. It's that fast. You can see I've got some menus up here in my menu bar now. I can see the health of my Mac. I can play around with it, decide if it's for me or not. And if it's not, I'll simply head back over to SetApp, click on the name of the app, and then right here where it says open, that's gonna open the app on my Mac. I'll click on the disclosure triangle next to it and then just hit uninstall. It'll ask me if I want to remove the application or uninstall completely. If I uninstall completely, it's gonna wipe it off of my Mac, not leaving any trace that it was ever installed. So I'll choose uninstall completely and you saw right away those menus disappeared. And there it is, it is now gone from my Mac. Really easy to play with stuff. If you're a tinkerer, that might be reason enough alone to get set app. Before I show you the apps that make SetApp an Instabuy for me, I wanna answer a question that I've received on this channel, which is, is this thing legit? Is SetApp for real? Is this piracy? No, it's not piracy, it's absolutely legit. SetApp was created by some actual Mac developers who got together, I suppose, with all of their other Mac developer friends and decided to pool their software together in order to make their offer a little bit more attractive. The developers that make SetApp, we scroll to the bottom of their website here, are called MacPaw, and here is their little credits in the footer here. If I click on this, it's gonna open up the MacPaw website, and they might have some applications you've actually heard of before, even if you've never used SetApp. Here's their current catalog of apps. They've got Clean My Mac X, which I use all the time, and they've got Clear VPN, which is a pretty decent VPN option, and they've also got something called Gemini 2, which is to find duplicate files or duplicate photos inside of your Mac. And they actually put their money where their mouth is because all three of their Mac apps are available on SetApp. If you were just to total these up, it's $35 a year for Clean My Mac X, $20, $21 every six months for Clear VPN and $20 a year for Gemini. Wow, you're getting pretty close to the cost of a SetApp subscription. There's 35 for Clean My Mac X, 
42 for clear vpn because that's 21 times 2 and then 20 bucks for gemini that's 97 dollars a year right there now i'm not going to include this inside of my list of must-have apps because these are nice but not ones i would die without the first app that I absolutely need and recommend you check out is called Ulysses. Now, Ulysses is a word processor that really excels at distraction-free writing and writing long-form content, things like online course scripts, blog posts, any sort of series that you want to put out repeatedly, like a newsletter. It's really great to write inside of Ulysses. If I head over to their pricing page, it is currently $40 per year. I would add that to my tally, so that's going to take care of January, February, March, and April of my set app subscription. Here's what one of my long form posts looks like inside of Ulysses. Now, what I really love about it is that it's completely distraction free. If I want it to be, there's no menus to get in the way and I can write in Markdown, which is really quick and easy to write exactly what I want. You can see I've included external links here. I've got images embedded. Writing things like headlines is very, very easy. You just use some characters on your keyboard. It only takes a few minutes to master and you'll be writing like a pro inside of Ulysses. When you're all done, you can actually publish directly from Ulysses to the web if you'd like. Click right up here on the double arrows, and then it's gonna pop open this preview of what your post will look like without all of the markdown. And you can see all of the screenshots in full size here. It looks really good. If I wanted to post this to my website, I'd simply click up here. It would say upload, or it says update right now because I've already posted this one. And I can go ahead and connect a different platform right over here. Choose manage accounts. And then if I hit this plus button, I'll see that Ulysses works with WordPress, Medium, Ghost, and micro.blog. So that's Ulysses. If you want a deep dive into Ulysses, let me know in the comments down below and maybe I'll make a dedicated video. Next up is Paste, a clipboard application. It sounds so incredibly boring, but you know what? Paste changed the way I use computers when I began using it several years ago. It's absolutely transformational. So let me show you how I use Paste in my everyday workflow. First of all, I can activate paste with a key command, shift command V, or I've also assigned that to be at my middle mouse button on my mouse. So I simply tap that and now paste is available. I get a list of my entire clipboard history dating back as far as I want. You can literally set it to be unlimited if you want. Best of all, it syncs over the cloud. So if you are like me and you have a desktop and a laptop, you can have the same clipboard everywhere you go. It makes it feel a lot more like you're working on just one device if you're on the go sometimes and other times you're in front of a big screen at a desk. There's two other killer features to paste. One is these pin boards where you can literally just drag anything you've copied and then save it forever inside of one of these pin boards. So if I drop this one right here, it's color changes to match the heading right here. This one's called online jobs. I save some of my default messages that I add inside of all of my messaging inside of online jobs right here. I can easily use this as a starting point to customize my replies. Or I have a pin board for Final Cut Pro, which is not actually copying and pasting anything like text. It's actually copying and pasting titles or effects inside of Final Cut because literally anything you copy can be saved to a pin board. That includes images. The last killer feature of Paste that I want to show you is called Paste Stacks. I activate this with another key command, Shift Command C. I get a Paste Stack right over here. I can move it around if I want. But now what happens is anything that I copy will live in that Paste Stack and I can easily grab a ton of different information to then put it on a different page. So for example, I've got a list of different DNS entries here. If I wanted to copy all of these individually and then put them over in Cloudflare, I'd have to go click, change tabs, paste it in, come back to this tab, and then click to the next one, paste it in. Well, the way paste stacks work, and you can see over here, I've got my first entry. I can simply go in order, copy them all. I've now got a complete set of C names. Here's my MX record, and here is my text record. All of this is saved to my paste stack. I could simply go over to Cloudflare, and it's just gonna fire things off in order. I'll show you this inside of a text document just as an example. So you can imagine I've added a new DNS record here. I could just press Command V to paste it in, go to the next line, Command V. You can see my paste stack getting smaller here and I can very, very quickly enter in a lot of DNS entries. And then they're all done. That's just one example, but paste stacks save a ton of time, easily well worth the money. Paste, by the way, is 30 bucks a year. When we add that together with Ulysses, we've now covered January, February, March, April, May, June, and July. 
If you work on websites, do email marketing, or even do print design, and you need to constantly access the same colors for your brand, or even find certain colors from other images, the next application is going to absolutely change the game for you. This is called SIP, and it lives in your menu bar of your Mac, and it simply lets you copy any color that you have on your screen, and then save those to a palette. All right, let me show you exactly how SIP works. I've got it up here in my menu bar. You can see the last color I selected was a shade of blue. Now I've pulled open the set app website here because I really like the colors of their little tags on their website. I've got a new project I'm gonna be working on and I wanna get some ideas for colors. So what I can do with SIP is go right up here to the menu bar, click on it, and now I've got this magnifying glass. I can hover over a color and when I click it, it's now saved up inside of my menu bar here. If I were to click the little disclosure triangle, I can see my color history. So I'm gonna go ahead and just pick a few more colors. I'll get this red one and this blue one here. Now I wanna to put together a palette from these colors. So I'm gonna click back over on the disclosure triangle next to SIP and I'm gonna expand it right here with this option. Now from here, I can get a list of my palettes. I'll add a new one by clicking plus and then I've got my color history right above it and I can simply add colors to my palette by dragging them in. If I click on the color history, it'll give me a list of all of the colors that I've clicked on throughout time. But for now, I'm just gonna add in the recent ones from set app I'll give it a name like set app and I'll even save this to the cloud so I can access it from any of my computers or share it with one of my teammates. So SIP is 20 bucks a year. That brings our total up to 90 bucks. We've paid $10 a month all the way through September, I believe at this point. I'm just scratching the surface on what you can do with SIP, but it's very, very handy and I use it for the simplest things every single day. Now here are all the apps I have installed on this Mac, which came from set app. Now, this is certainly more than I'm gonna cover in this video. There's a lot of great apps on SetApp and it was honestly very difficult to choose which ones I wanted to focus on for this video. If you see any others on this list that you're curious about, let me know and I can make some content about it. The last app that I'm gonna to mention today, which fulfills our $10 a month quota is CleanShot. Now, CleanShot is a fantastic screen capture and screen recording app that I recently made a full length video showing all of the ways that I use it every single day but I'm gonna go through just a few of them right now. And if you're curious to learn more about CleanShot, I'll put the link for that full length video in the description. The two best features of CleanShot are the ability to take screenshots of any particular window on your Mac and isolate it from the background. Then you can add in your own custom background and annotate it with things like text or arrows. They're ready for sharing on social media or even do what I do, which is use them for some of my YouTube thumbnails. Or you can use CleanShot to replace something like Loom. Put your webcam in the corner, record your screen, explain what's going on, ask a question to tech support, send a message to your remote team, whatever it is you need to do, it's probably easier to communicate it by just talking through it on your screen than it is to try to type it all out. So CleanShot is absolutely amazing and I use it every single day. I really couldn't live without it. If you get CleanShot through SetApp, you get a 10 gigabyte cloud plan so you can upload up to 10 gigabytes worth of videos all included in the SetApp subscription. Now, normally CleanShot is available for a one-time payment that doesn't really include much of a cloud account at all. It's only one gigabyte or you can go up to their Cloud Pro, which is 10 bucks a month if you pay annually, so 120 bucks a year. And here you're gonna get unlimited uploads, but like I mentioned in my full length clean shot video, I don't really worry about capacity and I've never even come close to filling up the amount that they give you if you just follow a few little tips like having videos self-destruct because you probably don't need those to live on forever anyway. So even if I don't count CleanShot as a $10 a month app because you're not really getting the $10 a month account here, we could count it at say half that value. Let's say five bucks a month. Well, over the course of the year, that's still 60 bucks. It's gonna push our set app budget way past what we're actually paying. And I'm still using at least two dozen other apps across my different Macs on set app, meaning that set app is definitely worth it. If you wanna go ahead and subscribe for Setup, I do have a link in the description. I appreciate it if you can click on that. It helps me out a lot to make more content like this. If you want deeper dives into any of the apps inside of Setup, let me know which ones you're curious about in the comments. I'd be happy to make some full length tutorials and really show you the magic that is Setup. My name is Dave Swift. Thank you for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.